Okay, we're going to move on to another story now. And it's a story that actually Ben and I were sitting there going, oh, God, it is a bit of a dog whistle. Do we have to cover it? Bilingual signs. Bilingual in terms of English and Māori. Um, street signs, road signs. And, boy, has this been an issue. It's trended on Twitter. People have gone on and on and on about it. And I'm sorry, I'm going to be brutally honest, I could not get worked up about it. I could care less. But then I thought, okay, what is the issue about driving on the roads? The issue is about safety. Do these signs make our roads safer? Are they practical in that sense? And I thought, I'm not an expert on that, but I do know a guy who is. Let's give him a buzz, see if he'll come on. He said yes, he joins us now, uh, Greg Murphy. Greg, how are you, mate? Good morning, Sean. Good, thank you. Yeah, look, put your politics aside. Everything we do on the road, because it is a dangerous place, but an incredibly useful place, should be about safety, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Are bilingual signs safer? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, There's a lot of stupid people in the world, but I think they'd all realise that uh, they ain't going to change anything at all. Um, Yeah. Uh, 124 people have died on our roads to the end of May, uh, Sean, and um, and bilingual signs wasn't going to change one of those outcomes, that's for sure, and it certainly isn't going to change anything in the future. Potentially, uh, could create more distraction for some people. It's not going to distract me because I know where I'm going and I know what uh, how to drive, but um, a lot of people are not in that that uh, situation, so you never know. It could definitely cause something. But at the end of the day, I don't have a problem with it either. What I've got a problem with is the government has said that they're certainly not going to be uh, spending any money to roll these out unless there is a requirement for a new sign to be positioned, which is fine. But what I would like to know is how much money Wakatahi have spent and how much they've given away to third parties who have benefited, again, from taxpayers' money to get to this point, they've asked for submissions on it. Uh, so there's a process there that's being done. There's been all these designs. Can you imagine how many consultants have had their fingers in the funding pie? Oh God! Now <laughs> you're making. Now you are raising my blood pressure because of course you're yes, right. But, but cook, of course I'm right because we have wasted hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars because of very poor management of the transport sector. Uh, or the agency, um, and this is just another example of that. So I would hate to imagine, I guarantee it's seven figures of some descript that's already yeah. been spent just to get to this point. And that's not helping anybody. That is not helping And anybody. I guess we could take that logic, Murph, and go wider and say, like even the new name, Waka Kotahi, I don't know how much it costs to order new letterhead or change all your graphics or all your corporate branding. Well, a, lot more, a lot more than it would be if you and I were doing it for our own businesses per yeah. se because um, it's government money, so there's plenty of it, so let's just spread it around a few more places and through a few more hands um, and have it cost a whole lot more than what it should. So, you know, these are the things that make my blood boil, you know. Yeah. Bilingual signs, whatever, fine. I mean, I, I, yeah, I but every movie. dollar you spend on that, or the focus group, or the discussion group, or Correct. the Waikato here, is a dollar that isn't being used to fix a pothole, or and, straighten and, out a kink in a road, right. or look at a danger spot. Yep, exactly right. You know, I can't get one cent out of these people to save lives, and I know that every cent that they spend on this subject and on this process and um, and everything about it, I guarantee I could have saved lives with that money, but um, uh, that's not, not what is happening. So the priorities are completely wrong, again, and um, the focus is wrong and the money's being spent in the wrong places. So, you know, we, uh, we get what we deserve, I'm afraid. Mm. So you're not coming from this as a sort of whitey post-colonial outrage thing. You're just saying in practical <laughs> terms, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, if, I, if I had been in charge of Waikatahi, I would have gone, let's just slide this through. Uh, oh, have we lost, Greg? The be chain. No. The signs are going to be done. Yeah, hello? Yeah, no, we got you back. That's good. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, as, signs, as signs need to be updated or replaced... Yeah. 
just change them. Don't tell anybody, don't ask anybody, just do it, all right? And save a shoot ton of money Buddy, along the way. I hear you, Greg, actually. I like it. So you just do the change by stealth. There's no great uh, moral yep. outrage or, or, or anything else going on. Hey, Greg, while I've Greg. got you here, while I've got you here, I wanted a clarification. I figure you're the guy who'd know. They introduced this thing when they were dropping speed limits, right, for various parts of roads and they wanted to go down to sort of 80k instead of the 100k open road speed limit. Um, I thought a few months back there had been an indication that that policy was being abandoned. Firstly, can you confirm whether that it was or not? Uh, well, the, minute the Prime Minister came out and said that he was halting um, the continued sort of um, uh, look at uh, speeds and, and the change of speeds. Um, uh, I've I've now forgotten the detail on that. That was when he became prime minister. Minister, yeah. Soon after that, well, it's funny. Um, I was going over the Wairapa, and there's a long stretch, yeah. very straight, very That's safe road done. between Featherston. It's already been dropped to 80 k, yeah. and it hasn't gone back. No, no, no. It's not going to go back. This is the thing. Whatever was done to that point has been stuck. It's it was it was other roads that were to be assessed moving forward um, were, were not, it was going to halt that process. So anything that had been decided upon um, and already changed uh, was done. And that Peter Road there, there's been a lot of people that are up in arms about that. And it has been another very, very poor decision. Well, the problem, um, Greg, to my, my mind is, again, once again, if we look at safety, right, there is a presumption that on general areas of road, here's what the speed limit is. It's across the whole country, right? And I'd say open sp road speed limit on a highway or a major arterial is 100k, mm. right? But that now isn't going to apply because we've got some that have been assessed and had their speed dropped, others that haven't. That just seems crazy to me because having some intrinsic, I don't know, internal program as to what is an appropriate speed in any situation or on any piece of road would seem to me to be an important part of safety rather than having to second guess what it might be. The other thing is I note on GPSs now there's, they're not always consistent with road signage anymore. Oh, they're true. It's being updated all the time. And if you look at the, the changes in speeds throughout our country now, it's, it's, it's hard to actually keep up with the amount of different speeds appropriate. There's 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and 100 yeah. speed limits throughout New Zealand now. Um, it, it's, it's become a bit of a farce. And, and again, a lot of roads, and I know for a fact there's a lot of people that have worked in that, um, in that uh, office down there in Wellington are in disagreement of what's going on. But, again, it's ticking boxes, Sean, where yeah. it's like we've failed dismally. I mean, 377 people died on our roads last year. It's 124 already this year. Um, you know, the, this is box ticking because speed is an obsession with, with some of these people, and they believe that it's going to um, be the the thing that, that makes this big difference, but it's not because it's driver behaviour. And a lot of people are not going to do those speeds in those speed areas. They'll continue to do what they want um, because they, they obviously are a disagreement with it. But also you've got so many drivers that are ill-prepared, as I keep going on about, as I mm. have done for years, driver behaviour, driver preparedness, awareness, skills, all that. And, and, and I can tell you, honestly, the amount of Ks that I do every year, it is without doubt getting worse and worse and worse because... I have to concur. Maybe I'm getting slower at 59, uh, no. Murph, but I, I look and say I am ever more cautious of the other driver on the road. And so you should be because you can you can be driving on doing the right thing and, and thinking and knowing that you're doing everything right and not making mistakes, but that doesn't mean you're not going to end up in a crash. Yeah. Look, here's a question, and, and I hope you don't mind, Greg. I just you come on, and people suddenly start sending me texts. Can Greg answer why many European countries have higher speed limits, um, and their road safety is excellent, yet we lower our speeds, and our road safety is total crap? Yeah, I mean um, the 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 systems and in, in overseas. I mean Germany. There's a lot of other countries where they have open open road uh, or higher road speed limits. Um, the autobahns, I think, are still. I think they might have limited them now to a like 200 k's or something. I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure on that. But a lot of those countries, the process of getting a driver's license is, is substantially more, more complex, tougher, harder, costs more money, and along that process, you actually learn how to be a safe driver. 
in New Zealand that doesn't happen. So our, our base sort of licensing system is, is a very low base. Um, it, it, it basically goes through the absolute, absolute most simplistic things to actually get a driver's license and most of it's just learning road code and road rules. It's not based on skill or learning basic skills. Yeah. Um, you learn how to pass the tests. You've got a defensive driving course which um, statistically has been proven by research that well, Katahi did to not change the statistics for those that have versus those that have not, but it gives six months off the restricted life. Okay, so, so it's the, just... The actually, it cost. comes back to a term you used earlier. This is just box ticking, isn't it? 100% box ticking. That's, that's where we're at, and we are spending more money on it than we ever have on Road to Zero, and telling people about it, and getting nothing. No it. result. No result yeah. at all. What about, Greg, road conditions and potholes? Yep. Man, uh, and look, I don't know, is yep. this some... Um, Terrible misinformation campaign against the government about potholes, but I figure it isn't. I figure it's a real issue and, and something's gone horribly wrong here. Well, I've spoken to uh, lots of tyre dealers, for example, um, and their increase in damaged tyres that they're replacing over the last uh, three years is just rising at a rate that's hard to keep up with, and it's damaged. So things that have they've run run into holes, they've run over things, uh, debris on the roads, which is a massive problem as well. Um, there's no clean up after road work's done; they just leave stones and crap and, sh and rubbish and cones and stuff all over the roads. Um, windscreen repairers, um, their their workloads have just absolutely gone through the roof. Uh, one in, insurer that I'm aware of. Um, told me that in the last three years, 50% increase in windscreen claims um, over previous, um, and, it's, and it's on the rise. So the damage being done to vehicles, mechanics, fixing cars that have actually run into holes and, and hit debris, it's all going up and up and up and up. So this massive amount of waste that we're generating as well in this in this world that we're supposed to be trying to improve and you know put electric cars on the road to save the planet, all this kind of stuff, well, the wastage... Is, is going through the roof because our roads are in such disrepair. Um, the amount of stuff that we're chucking out, having to replace new cars, replacing windscreens, tyres, wheels, um, you know, suspension components, all that kind of stuff because of, of the damage that's being done. Um, I know people that have had wheels ripped off their trailers, off their cars, you know, destroyed tyres. What constantly. changed three um, years ago then? When did our roads turn to crap? It's been going on before that. It started to, but it's just now got to a point where it's been such a runaway mm. train that we can't keep up with fixing it. So, um, you know, and, and it just seems that maybe the, the roading contractors are under a, a lot of pressure. Maybe they're not, um, I don't know. Difficulty finding staff, um, if where yes, budgets are allocated. Yep. And I yep. guess I, I come away always from a conversation with you knowing a bit more than I did when I went into it. But the issue is here is we shouldn't be having national outrage and debate over no. bilingual signs. In fact, they don't no. matter hooey. We should be debating potholes, road safety, our speed limits and our driver training. Yep. That well, stuff and matters. It needs to start, and it needs to start at the beginning with, with driver training and, and improving driver behaviour. And we also need much, much higher consequence for for breaking the law when it comes to this because we're just pathetic in this country these days about that. Yeah. Absolutely. Don't get me started on on uh, these groups, um, you know, terrorising communities with their cars and leaving leaving destruction yeah. behind them everywhere on every weekend, every Friday, Thursday, whatever they choose to do it and know that they're going to get away with it because police have no power. But, yeah. hey, that's why the crime is the way. Hey, Murph, that was a really good yarn. I thank you very much. Indeed. Look, I do have one other personal question to ask you. Do you watch Drive to Survive, that Netflix serv a series on Formula One? To start with, um, I thought it was a, I thought it was very good to start with. I'm, I'm a little bit too much. Um, not, I have too much knowledge of the detail. So they, when they started to sensationalise it and started to uh, move things around to make it like it was um, uh, more exciting than what it actually was, I started to lose interest. Uh, and this year. Uh, I didn't watch season four. Oh, that was the last season. Because I, I just finished watch, binge watching it and I thought, it's lost something. It's not quite as good as it was. And I thought I'd ask for a more professional insight. So it has. Yeah, they've, the, they've the, lost a bit of. 
the storyline's gone a little bit, um, and and because they were sensationalising it so hard, and actually it wasn't actually real; they were actually yeah. manufacturing. Um, it it started to to really sort of go backwards a bit, and then uh, in the last twelve months, they've actually had not a lot to yeah. get too excited about. So, but um, it, it definitely worked for Formula One. The popularity of it, certainly in the United States, and and uh, is just gone insane. So it was a, a huge thing for them to do. That's for sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks, Murph. Really nice talking to you. Hope we can do it again soon. Hey, thanks for your time. Yeah, cheers, mate. Cheers. Good on Bye. you, mate. Uh, road safety, driving expert, road safety expert, all-round good guy, Greg Murphy there, and he says, yeah, the big debate, the big debate over over bilingual signs, really, we should be having a debate over road safety driver training. Uh, and he just says, I must spend the government money. Wow.